My dearest Abigail, Last week, Professor Fouch assigned us a research project that requires us to include at least three primary sources in our bibliography. So I am here at the library, searching I know not for what. Given that I am uncertain precisely what makes a source primary or how it differs from secondary, I fear my search may take some time yet. Should it come to pass that I miss Taco Night at Atwater, tell Hannah I will see her at practice tomorrow. Hey y'all, my name is Amy and I'm one of the librarians here at Davis Family Library at Middlebury College. In this video, I'm going to talk about primary and secondary sources. Let's talk about secondary sources first and primary sources second. When you're doing scholarly research, using a research tool like Library Search or a research database or Google Scholar or anything like that, the great majority of the sources that you find there will be secondary sources. Secondary sources can be things like nonfiction books, scholarly articles, or, well, pretty much books and articles for the most part. But secondary sources set out to contextualize, to analyze, to explain a topic to the reader. And since that's what most scholarly books and articles set out to do, they're mostly secondary sources. Primary sources, on the other hand, can be a huge variety of things. Some of the primary sources that you might encounter in your own research include things like letters, case studies, government documents, photographs, speeches, manuscripts, census records, artworks, eyewitness accounts, journals, assays, interviews, financial records and ledgers, video and audio recordings, performances, church registers, printed ephemera, oral histories, artifacts, specimens, musical scores, diaries, maps, and public records. And this is obviously hardly an exhaustive list, but you get the idea. So if the purpose of a secondary source is to explain, then the primary source is that which is being explained. And here is the most important thing to know. While some kinds of sources are much more likely to be secondary, and other kinds of sources are much more likely to be primary, it isn't the kind of thing that a source is that makes it primary or secondary. It's its relationship to your topic. So the secondary sources that you usually find in a tool like library search are about your topic, but your primary sources are your topic, or at least they're a piece of your topic in as much as they're an example of, or a product of, or in some way are directly connected to your topic. Here's an example. This is a review of Francis Ford Coppola's 1972 film, The Godfather. It was written by celebrated film critic Pauline Kael and published in the New Yorker magazine the week the film was released. Now, reviews are generally considered a secondary source because they're about something, in this case, a film. And if your research topic is The Godfather, then indeed, this is a secondary source. On the other hand, if your topic was the history of American film criticism, then this is an example of the form itself, and so it becomes a primary source. So you see, it's not about what the item is, it's the same review in both cases, but it's about whether the source is the topic or is about the topic that makes it primary or secondary. One thing that students often struggle with when looking for primary sources is knowing where to find them. Secondary sources are relatively easy, the databases are full of them, but primary sources can be a lot more complicated. And obviously, given the huge variety of things that can be primary sources, the answer to that question depends a lot upon what your topic is. But one good place to start is the research guides. There's a research guide for every subject that's taught at Middlebury that's built and maintained by the subject specialist librarian for that subject area. And research guides often contain sections about finding primary sources, especially in those subject areas that make frequent use of them. 
There are also large digital collections out on the web that contain vast numbers of primary sources of all kinds, like the Digital Public Library of America or the Internet Archive. And of course, our own special collections is always worth a visit. But if you're ever struggling to find primary sources for a research project, you can always turn to the Middlebury College librarians for help. You can find us at the research desk at Davis Family Library or via go slash ask us. Secondary sources may make up the bulk of the scholarly literature that you use for your research, but primary resources are the foundation on which that work is built. So I hope this video has helped to clarify those concepts for you a little bit and maybe given you some ideas about how you can use primary sources in your next research project. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.